Hello, everyone. Very happy to be here today. Uh, just share my presentation. You can see it. All right. Yes. Okay, so uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, Data Package Manager for CCAN, which was the project that we uh, presented in the last uh, Frictionless Hackathon. Uh, but like, I, I tried to, to put it a little bit more context around why we developed the project and what we are trying to do here in, in Minigerize. And the background is, uh, it's always uh, data quality and uh, documentation. So it's, it's what we are trying to achieve. And uh, the, the, the joke in the, the first slide is like, if it's not written, it doesn't exist. Uh, and, you know, documentation is kind of like exercise. Everyone should be probably doing a little bit more of it. And like, if you don't do it, it's not gonna hurt that much if you start doing and you're gonna think yourself well, later. So let's start with a little bit of context uh, where we are coming from, uh, like the general work that we are doing in Minigerais. So I'm responsible for the, the, the unit that leads the proactive transparency policy in the state of Minigerais. Uh, so that basically means publishing information to the general public without a formal request by by a citizen for example because of a, a freedom of information law you know who, who is aware of that legislation but it's very common across the world uh, so it's this the public sector making information available to the public uh, in a proactive manner and in that unit we have uh, three major responsibilities you might say so two are products uh, the fiscal transparency portal uh, it has a very rich tradition in, in Brazil and in other countries, uh, mostly because of, of uh, a push from fiscal responsibility laws so, so that the states, uh, uh, the public sector in general, should publish uh, real data, real time data information regarding uh, how the state is uh, collecting revenues and how it's, uh, it's spending uh, expenditures and how it's procurement contracts and their sort of thing. So it's our most, uh, uh, our most well-known project that we are responsible for here in Brazil uh, is the Fiscal Transparency Portal. Uh, we, we launched in 2020 the, the Open Data Portal uh, with a more broader scope uh, to publish uh, other data not related to public financial management, which is the focus of, of the Fiscal Transparency Portal. Uh, and it's an initiative that is, yeah, is still developing here in Minas Gerais. And we are pushing forward to make it uh, real in all, all, all kinds of ways. And we also have a work with uh, the agencies, institutional websites. So it, it's, we don't have that much capacity to act on this, but it's like, making basic standardization across the agency's websites. So basic information that every agency should publish. So for example, that would be contact information and things like that. So it's a very big umbrella, uh, but, but uh, the core focus today is on the open data portal and the process for publishing data that we are uh, uh, developing here. And the PCCAN is a, a part of that and friction is the whole uh, foundation behind it. So it all started with the fiscal transparency portal, actually. Uh, the, you might say that the mission was to publish as open data, the, the raw data behind the, uh, the, the fiscal transparency portal. Uh, so behind the fiscal transparency portal, which is already a, a consolidation of several uh, source systems uh, that, that are used across the government to control expenditures and revenues and, and compensation of employees and everything in between. Uh, so we have like uh, several dimensional models uh, in the sense of, of Kimbo tradition, fact tables and dimensional tables that powers this portal. And the mission was to make it available as uh, open data. Uh, 
the, nowadays, the, the fiscal transparency portal is more geared towards a service. Uh, so someone who is interested in one line of a database, so looking, for example, we publish in Brazil, we publish the compensation of employees. So if someone wants to look up the compensation of one specific employee and not for a, a more uh, analytics heavy workload. So uh, we need to publish as open data. And we uh, started that process. And in that process, we, we to, to actually publish all our data as open data that we are responsible, we were also in, we were also developing this framework so that uh, the other departments could publish their data. And uh, we, we actually launched the open data portal to do that. So uh, the, the, the best framework that we have for the work we are, we, we're trying to do, uh, that, like the best way to describe, it, it's very much inspired by, 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 by the work at Frictionless and Atopian and CCAN. Uh, but there is this uh, framework from Angento, uh, which is like the docs like code philosophy or approach. Uh, and we, we really like that uh, to, to give like an overall uh, direction of what we're trying to do. So in, in her book, Docs Like Code, she says that if you are doing these four steps and everyone who is familiar with uh, like you might say more modern practices in software development, they are gonna recognize that there is a lot of, of room to how to do each of these steps. But if you are uh, storing the doc source files of your documentation in a virtual control system, and you are building the doc artifacts automatically, and you are ensuring that you have a review process for that, uh, that artifacts, and that you are publishing the artifacts for public consumption without too much intervention, then you have a docs like code uh, process. And there's a lot of ways to, to actually uh, piece together the different tools and the toolkit to do this. And uh, I'm gonna show a little bit how we are doing here and where data package manager for CCAN fits in this, in this process, uh, which is the last step, it's publishing. So publishing a, 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 a data package so a data set that is documented according to frictionless standards in a, a, a CCAN instance. Uh, and I think I forgot to time when I started. Let me just see so that I can just one second. Yeah, that's better. So uh the doc source files. So we need uh, a machine readable way to represent the documentation. Uh, frictionless facts are awesome for that. And we, it, it's, it's frictionless facts and some, some files that are standard practice in software development uh, that we also use so readme, change log, and contributing. Uh, so nothing really new here. Uh, a nice thing that we are doing here. Uh, in, in, in our practice is using multi-line strings, Yen multi-line strings to, to write like more long form explanations. So very disabled, uh, very nice to, to see the evolution of the documentation. Uh, and the, 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 they are not part of the specs per se, but the framework uh, frictionless can handle this. So we are making very heavy use of this. Uh, and it, you you must store the doc source files in version control. So this again for people in the software development industry, it's nothing new. But when you start talking to people outside, even like data professionals that don't call themselves data professionals, but they are doing work with data, uh, version control is not that uh, it's not that uh, recognized, and it's a fundamental part of the process. It's probably the backbone, and it's 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 a hard sell, you might say, because it's like Git is the 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 the, the standard, and it's a hard sell because it, it's a like the 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 sticking learning is it's a little bit uh, the learning curve is, is steep. 
So that, that's a problem, but it's fundamental for the process that we are trying to achieve. Uh, so we write uh, two screenshots here. Uh, we build, there's this interpretation of what actually is to, what, what it actually means to build the, the documentation. Uh, so there's an interpretation, they're still interpreting what this means for us, but uh, basically it's like you are collecting some operational metadata that comes from the data processing step itself. So it's like it could be things like the number of rows from a data set or some general job information, provenance information that uh, happens dynamically, you might say. So it's not uh, human curated. Um, you you uh, create human readable docs. Uh, so this is a part that you're still trying to find our way to, to actually be able to build some nice human readable documentation, both for the final consumer, but internally. So there's a lot of, of process happening in the data creation process that you need to circulate documentation to get approval, for example. And we still don't have a very nice visualization of all the rich metadata that is actually encoded in a data package, JSON and the other specs. Uh, so that's the thing we are looking. Uh, and the validation, the continuous validation. So friction, good tables and friction is validate. Uh, to, we have machine readable metadata and then and therefore we can actually make sure that the, the data conforms to the metadata or the data conforms to the documentation. Uh, and so that, that would be the, the build step, nothing new or, or, or frictionless here. Uh, the review step is, 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 is there's nothing new also, but it, it's important for us uh, in the sense of, of spreading the gospel, you might say, uh, about uh, open government and, and open source and, and everything in, in between. But the, the, there is this idea that uh, having a public uh, repo can, uh, in theory, uh, increase the accountability of the people responsible for that pro pro project to, for example, do not let the documentation go stale. So, uh, like, mm, the, 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 the digital uh, team uh, in the UK, they have a model for make things open and make things better. And we really believe that it's a, a, like a two-way street. Uh, and this tendency to, to software engineers and enthusiasts for having high quality documentation varies inversely with their enthusiasts for being the person who provides it. It's real, like uh, it could be, it's fun if you if you are into it, but writing documentation can be sometimes uh, a, a job that some people don't want to do. But a public repo can help with that. And uh, collaboration. So that's again coming from version control and uh, the ability to have that hosted somewhere. Uh, today's GitHub, but it, it doesn't need to be by all means. Uh, and Ben Bauter, who is from GitHub, but has a long tradition in 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 the, the public sector in the United States, uh, it, it, he, he noted that like you get, if you have a repository, a public repository, uh, all of a sudden you get uh, a running log of no issues about the data. Uh, you get the ability so that people that are using can actually propose changes, uh, a running log of what has changed and that is very valuable and that ability to collaborate, uh, it was very important for code and we, we kind of needed to unlock that for data. We, like we, the feelings that we have not unlocked it yet. Uh, and like that's just, not, not just, but that's context. Now for, for actually what DPC can is all, uh, all about. It's actually a very small part of the process. So, we have uh, uh, a local data set documented according to frictionless packs. So we have a data package and you want it to publish where people are going to actually consume it. For us in Minas Gerais, that's our data catalog is CCAN. 
So that's where the end users, you might say, or the data consumers are going to actually see the, the data and get the data. Uh, and we need to go from place A to B. So from a local data package uh, or it, that's on GitHub, for example, and to, 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 to make it available in CCAN. Uh, in, but following that, that not that much human, uh, uh, human steps in the way. So it's like the, the, the push to deploy, so push to, to, to publish to CCAN, uh, you might say. And here, DPCCAN is doing this step. So it's, it's uh, taking a local data package and publishing to, to uh, CCAN. There, there's, like, there's nothing new at all. Uh, so I, I've taken this, this quote from Joe Walsh and Rufus Pollock from 2007. Uh, so like they are speaking about uh, the Debian of data and like uh, right from the beginning, like CCAN, uh, I think it was conceived to be this re registry of open data, but there was a, an interface behind it to actually publish and to consume. Uh, and like Friction and Spy nowadays has an integration uh, with CCAN. Uh, it, it's still experimental. Uh, it's maybe an area that we can can talk a little bit more after. Uh, but nowadays the integration there is not. It, it doesn't really can do this process of doing the initial publishing and doing the the updating uh, of, of data sets. Uh, but the idea, it, it, it's nothing new. So it's like a command line program that you can use to publish and get data sets. And, but people are still asking. So like 2020, people are asking, is there a package manager for data? Uh, because it's such a strong idea that we, in the same way that we can, uh, maybe nowadays it's not Debian, it's like NPM install something, uh, we should be able to uh, install a, a, a data package and have it available locally uh, because data on my disk is easier to work with uh, than data over the wire. And it's a, an idea that resonates and I think Friction is very well positioned to be the foundation to, to, to actually do this. Uh, so let me actually show a little bit of, of uh, what we're talking about, so nine minutes. Uh, so we have, for example, th this is a, a, a data package. Uh, it is already uh, published in or CCAN instance. So it's represented in the, in the CCAN instance uh, with all the metadata. This was one of the problems of the current iteration of, of frictionless CCAN plugin uh, and what, what what the process actually looks like. So this was uh, just uh, so it was created with the PC can uh, it's the just zoom up a little bit. Uh, so it was created with the PC can data set uh, create and we need some config information here uh, for the, the actual host uh, and the key to actually publish the data. Uh, but it was created, now it's represented here uh, with all the uh, with all the metadata that's coming from the, the, the table schema documentation that is living in the data package. So uh, we'll, we let it slide some water and Ipsum in the description. That's not uh, very good. Uh, we can, so just to show it in action, the, we are like creating an, an uh, or own convention for how to store the files uh, of a data package. And we really like this idea of, of the separated table schemas, uh, store as YAM, uh, just because it, this is much more readable than the, the JSON representation of this of Markdown. Uh, so, but this is wrong. Uh, 
on this was just to see that it was working. Uh, and now we do we do need to have the, the the extra step of actually building the data package.json, which is the major uh, uh, artifact that we are going to use to to upload it to 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 CCAN. And we we use make files for for the for orchestrating, you might say, the build step. It's a, it's a, a very old YouTube uh, in the C and C plus plus tradition. Uh, but uh, the, the the important part is like. There's this notion that we are building the, the final artifact, the data package JSON, and we are doing, for example, validation. Uh, so I'm gonna just uh, I'm, I'm gonna to create uh, from the uh, EM representation this intermediate representation that's human curated. Uh, we're gonna create the final data package JSON, and uh, let. Let me actually uh, uh, so uh, to to make use of the review process. So I'm going to create a branch here. Let me. Uh, so we did some changes. Uh, we need some sort of approval process for this, so just move your uh, Ipsen. Uh, I'm going to push this to GitHub. Uh, I want to do a pull request so that we are following that review process and we are creating this this a process, this visibility about the process of what is changing and whatnot. Uh, okay, but I'm just gonna confirm the merge. And we have, uh, just to exemplify the process, we have a little bit uh, a, a, a workflow for GitHub Actions running here. And all that CCAN is doing uh, is this part right here. So we are uh, updating the data set uh, in the this particular CCAN instance, and we want data store documentation to be actually provided, and it should it should be happened by now. So we can go check on that, and it's done. So th this is the PCCAN. It, it, it's supposed to be simple, uh, just publish and update it. Uh, what, what we did in the hackathon that we didn't have uh, was the ability to do partial updates. So the, the, we have like a one day time window to update the fiscal transparency portal in the open data portal. And it was very important for us to be able to not overwrite the data sets that were already stored in CCAN, both because we want to preserve uh, the we want to preserve the, the last updated information. So we don't want by any way to subscribe because that, that information is important for users. But we also, uh, because of the time we know that we had, we couldn't upload it, everything when we, uh, when we are going to be publishing the whole data set uh, because it's too big and, and most of the files never change it. They, they never change. Uh, so here, the, we, we only changed the, the metadata in the status brasileiros. So we have, we just changed the, the, the removed the lot of some text. So it, it was uploaded uh, like last modified 10 hours ago. Okay, this is weird. Oh, well, I don't know what happened. Uh, but the, the lot of Ipsum was here, right? That's weird. Uh, okay, so uh, that's that's a taste. That's a taste for what we're doing. It's simple. It's simple. It's just to publish. Uh, yeah. Let me get back to the presentation. So the, the slides are also in this repo. Uh, this slides just to they are here if anyone is interested.
and we do some some nice nice things uh, in the in the make file. So for example, we right now you can't actually do like conditional validation uh, on resources that have not changed. You need to do that logic uh, with custom coding. Um, and for us, that was a very big deal. And we use uh, a nice make file trick to actually only validate the, 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 the resources that have actually changed. So if anyone has this sort of problem, uh, the make file is there so that you can take a look. Uh, it's a nice, uh, a nice little trick and very, very simple. And make is everywhere, so it's a good uh, tool to, to have on your tool belt. So, but going back to the presentation, like to, to the end, the final, uh, what, what, what are the, the next steps uh, that we are seeing? So the first one is to, to complete the circle of the package manager for data. We need to get the data. So because of the way frictionless and CCAN are integrated, I can't actually just read a package from CCAN and, go and get a, a nice data frame in Python or R uh, because of, the, of the, the, the links, the way the links are constructed to, to, to the actual resources. Uh, and that, that, that's, that's a problem because it's not easy still for data consumers to actually get the data from CCAN, which is the place that the registry that they are getting. So we want that get uh, so that users can actually get the data now that we have solved for the publishers. Uh, we need to respect table schema types in CCAN data store. We are not doing that yet. So the, I think that there's this tension CCAN validation that you guys also uh, were tackling this problem because the, 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 the types in frictions is much more richer than the, the in Postgres uh, data store. So we need a, the mapping and data pusher uh, currently can't handle this this process with, with data pushes. It should actually uh, pushes up data from the file to to Postgres database. Uh, so we need to tackle that. Uh, we need some human nice human readable visualization of the metadata, both in a static website for sharing uh, internally for review and in CCAN. Uh, of validation report. So we we, we discovered. In the process of researching uh, this, we discovered the, the uh, React Components project of Frictionless. So the the, the visualization of the, the 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 metadata regarding the validation processes is already fixed. But uh, we have a lot of so it's it's we are publishing uh, dimensional models. So we have a lot of uh, relationships between foreign and primary keys, and it's essential to be able to visualize that. And it's encoded in the in the in the, in the, in the metadata, and richer data dictionaries. So we have a lot of information in the in the in the spec, and and we and we that we have documented our, our dimensional models. But uh, the default data dictionary in CCAN is still missing most of the, the information, and we are in the we actually already. Uh, have uh, finished the, the process. Of, we don't have the capacity to do this internally, but we have already finished uh, contracting out this, this, this development. So it's going to happen. Uh, and maybe contribute back upstream. So that's uh, a big part of what we're doing in terms of, of philosophy. Uh, so both in terms of the friction and second plugin to make it uh, lead the experimental state with, the, with the, the lessons that we learned while developing the PC can. Uh, but also for the, the React components, for example, for diagrams, for relationships between primary key and foreign key, uh, and the CCAN data pusher integration uh, because of the types. And I think that's a wrap. So th this is just like, let's write some docs. It can be fun and it's going to be good at the end. So with on that note, I think that's a wrap. <laughs>